half in the bag. The 9-11 moon landings were an outside job. Man, I can't believe it's been like two weeks and stupid people are still doing that bird box challenge. Oh God. Oh. Oh, this is so hard, I can't see anything. Oh, oh. oh the cantaloupe's ripe. Oh. 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 Where is it? I can't. I can't. This looks really dangerous. Oh God, where is it? I can't find my twine. Ah. Jesus Christ. Where's my twine? Why would he hit his cane on things? I found my twine. Jesus Christ. Oh God. Oh fuck. There we go. All right. Um. Oh, oh. What the fuck is he doing? Uh, he's wrapping twine around my beer. It's Okay, I'm gonna try and drive to the grocery store. So Mike, have you seen Bird Box? I have. What made you think of that? Netflix presents Bird Box. It's the movie premise equivalent to the horror jump scare. Sandra Bollock stars as a pregnant lady who has a baby, then adopts another baby to take care of, all the while dealing with not looking at something evil or it makes you crazy, or it makes you kill yourself, or makes insane people sane but bad. Either way, a whole bunch of people act scared, crazy, or annoying. All while Sandra Bollock acts her way through the movie while loaded up on Valium. Eat shit and die, Netflix! <laughs> what are you laughing at? Why do you laugh so much? What are you, happy? Well, Jay, here we are. Tell us all about Bird Box. <laughs> where, do we, where do we start with Bird Box? Because uh, the movie itself is not good. It's not interesting bad. It's just kind of generically bad but people have lost their fucking minds over this thing. It's bizarre. Yeah, I think this whole thing kind of like f f flew to the side of me. I remember seeing like on Netflix, like Sandra Bullock with a, a blindfold on and, and I was like, what's that? Yeah. And then he said, Sandra Bullock, nope. Well, yeah, but I'm going I'm to watch Office reruns for the millionth time. There you go. That's what you do. With, that's the only thing they should just rename Netflix to The Office. Yeah. But then it was like, have you seen Bird Box? Oh, Bird Box. And I was like, what, 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 what? And then, and then I heard what you told me that Netflix, uh, while they don't release their numbers, they said 45 million accounts watched the Bird Box. That's the, that's the weird thing because Netflix doesn't release their numbers ever. Yet for some reason, with this one particular thing, they said, 45 million people watched it. You don't want to be left out, do you? So I'm wondering if these numbers are accurate or not. Because that's the thing people are saying, too, is that the movie is uh, about on par as, as far as how many people have seen it with, like, Black Panther, as far as movies that have come out in the last year. It's under Avengers Infinity War, but it's right around the level of Black Panther. Yeah, I guess so. Like, box office-wise, if you figure... Yeah. This all roughly speaking. I, I think they. I think the figure was ten bucks a head, four hundred fifty yeah, million bucks. Yeah, exactly. It was going to be a little over four hundred million, and if this was released in the theaters. But the thing is, if this was released in theaters, forty-five million people wouldn't have gone and seen it. Uh, this movie would probably have tanked. I, I chalk its popularity and its success up to uh, one viral marketing, uh, partially on Netflix part, but also on. The, the rise of the Bird Box Challenge, because it's a fun thing that people can do. And the, and the good old-fashioned W-O-M, word of mouth. Word of mouth, sure. Um, Most but also, important and cheapest form of marketing. I got the kids. 
We have the kid. Oh, shit. And I think even more important than that, though, is the fact that it was released right before Christmas, right around the holidays. Everybody's home. People are, are off of work. They're, not, they're off of school. They got nothing to do. You're with your family. Mom likes Sandra Bullock. I guess we can all just watch this. I guess, I guess this, this, this is a new genre called mom horror. Mom horror, that's yeah. a good word for it, Just, yeah. The, there are a couple spooky things happen in it. You know, you got the Sarah Paulson getting hit by a bus, the old lady gets stabbed in the neck with scissors. Spoilers! Uh, oh yeah, spoiler By the way, alert. spoilers for this whole thing, because nobody cares. Yeah. Um, but yeah, for the most part, it's not super gory or super tense. It's, it's actually, I mean, to me, I didn't absolutely hate it. Um, it's, it's an easy fix in a lot of areas. Um, a couple of lines of dialogue to explain the threat, some, some light editing, uh, trimming, I mean. Rearranging of the entire structure. And, and the structure, of course. This, this is like they should, they, the could teach, they could teach classes on how not to structure your narrative and use this as an example. Uh, uh, they structured the movie in a way that it deflated all tension. Yes. Um, because, uh, well, let's get into it. Uh, it starts off, San Sandra Bullock, is it Bullock or Bollock or? Bullock. 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 Like licking a bull. Yes. Not licking a ball. Bullock. Bullock. I've never known how to say her name. Starts off, shot of her eyes. Under no circumstance are you allowed to take off your blindfold. Camera pulls back. Because eyes are important. That's directing. <laughs> um, and then she's yelling at her kids, which, uh, which she has named girl and boy. Yes. And she's, That's the whole, the, uh, her arc of the movie is that she, she's emotionally closed off from people. So much so that she doesn't want to name her children. You know what? This movie's so popular. In 2019, Girl and oh, Boy. Oh, don't even finish the sentence. Are going to be the most popular names. I named her Girl after my favorite movie, which will always be my favorite movie. That's like the, the, the people that like 10 years ago were naming their kids after Twilight. And now those kids are getting beat up in elementary school. I also got pregnant while doing the Bird Box Challenge. <laughs> I don't know who the I father don't know is. Who the father is. <laughs> I just love the film. It changed my life. Um, yeah, that's going to be all the rage in, uh, at frat houses. <laughs> hey, you girls want to do the Bird Box Challenge? And bro, bro dudes are going to be high fiving each other all over colleges. Something's happened. Can you just please drive? Did you see something? Uh, oh, well, okay, first of oh, all. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, Sandra, Sandra's telling her kids, you know, don't look at anything, you're gonna die, we gotta go down the river. Yes. And then, so the point of this part was the structure. She's going down the river with the two kids, That's and then we flash back five years, and we are introduced to a litany of characters that we all know will be dead. Yes, because we know that she ends up with just her and the two kids. Also, in the opening, the scene right after that, she's in the hospital, you know, they're, they're checking out the baby, uh, and we see she only has one baby. So we're like, oh, okay, so one of those kids isn't hers. And then 10 minutes later, we're introduced to uh, another pregnant woman who is conveniently due right around the same time as Sandra Bullock. So we say, oh, the other baby is that, ladies, and she's going to die. Tension deflated again. Mysteries <laughs> deflated. Mysteries gone. Or mysteries solved. Yeah. Before yeah. they become mysteries. <laughs> <laughs> but we were introduced to Sandra Bullock's sister, played by Sarah Paulson, who should have played the lead because Sarah Paulson's awesome and Sandra Bullock's boring. But Sarah Paulson, uh, she's too busy shooting American Horror Story. She said, I'll show up for a day and then I'm going to jump in front of a truck. <laughs> People describe seeing an entity that takes on the form of your worst fears. Oh my God! What are you looking at? What did you see? It's a movie that could work if a lot of little things were fixed, moved around, tweaked. It kind of feels like a like a first draft of a screenplay. Sure. You know, before where, where, anyone writes notes, like, yes. hey, maybe don't do this framing device yeah. that gives away everything. I know it was based on a book, and a book is is written by one person, usually, uh, unless you have a ghostwriter or whatever. The singular idea of an author, I don't know who or w when, but, uh, and then uh, someone adapts it into a screenplay. So yes. I, I get that, but it does feel like a first draft of a script before people look at it and go, oh, take this out, 
take yeah. this out, rearrange this structure, fix this. Explain uh, da, da, da. something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, so it kind of feels like like that, yeah. um, where it's like a little frustrating because there were some good sequences, there were some some good performances, there's some a lot of good moments, but a little messy, messy. But it's a good, it's a good um, if you're if you're looking to write scripts or uh, if you're like kind of like movie buffs like us, because I, I like movies like this. Um, that because they're kind of fascinating in a way where it's like, oh, yeah. That's well, it's like I mentioned, it's a good example to show to someone as an example of how not to structure your script. Right, right. Structure your story. Yeah, um, where you're like, it's a good movie to show in a film school. Like, yes. Okay, let's talk about why this doesn't work. <laughs> yes. Um, and, and, uh, and, or give us your reactions. It's a, good te it's a teaching tool. It's a teaching tool. And I think it felt like a drag because... Uh, like we said, the structure was wrong, where it deflated all the tension. If it went in chronological order, yeah, um, where it's like, yeah, like most zombie movies do, we don't, know? we don't know what's happening. The characters don't know what's happening, yeah. and then we learn along with them. I mean, Dawn of the Dead. If we if we showed the helicopter ending, where you know, they get away, they get the two <laughs> characters get away, yeah, and they leave in the helicopter, and then we say six months earlier. And be like, oh, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> yeah, uh huh. The, the zombies are going to overrun the mall. Not knowing what happens in your movie is important, especially in a movie like this where it's a disaster and everyone's fighting for survival. As far as the story goes, not as far as the, the creature. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, sure. It's good to know what's going on with the motivation of your creature or what it's capable of. That, too, is important, yeah. And that's what this gets wrong as well. It's a, a threat in the film that has no limits. Yes. It has psychological powers, because at the end, Sandra Bullock is, is running around the woods and the little kids and her are hearing voices. So it could tap into your brain. Um, I, I think the only thing it can't do is like physically harm you. It, it can't go into houses. It can't go inside cars. But... For whatever reason, I don't yeah. know what the cutoff is for what it can and can't do as far as what's outdoors and what's indoors. Right. It's all very nebulous. Yeah, and, I, and that's, like I always say, um, rules are so important in horror films because this one I didn't know the rules. Well, it, it becomes awkward because it's like the, everyone's comparing this to A Quiet Place, but the to me, m the structure of it mostly reminds me of every zombie movie ever made. Well, sure. And in a zombie movie... Like in the George Romero zombie movies, we never really know what causes the dead to come back to life. People come back to life, we don't know why, but we understand what the threat is, mm -hmm. how to stop them, what the rules are. If you had a gun, shoot them in the head. That's a sure way to kill them. If you don't get yourself a club or a torch, beat them or burn them, they go up pretty easy. So even though we don't know the start of it, we still have some sort of structure to know what to be scared of and what kind of peril our characters are in. In this movie, it's just sort of like anything. Yeah. So if you look at the monster, then you want to kill yourself. But then there's this whole little plot point where they mention the, the Institute for the Criminally Insane and how they all broke out. And then they broke into the, the guy's house and were making, you know, like the, the guy in the river in mm -hmm. the beginning when he's like, I want your children. Come on, yeah. I'm, I'm crazy. I want you to look at it too. Yeah. It's like, yeah, crazy people are now uh, uh, recruiting you to look at the thing. Basically. So yeah, if you're crazy, whatever that means, uh, because there are varying degrees of crazy. <laughs> this is true. Um, I guess just general generalized crazy disorder. <laughs> Uh, if, if you look at the monster, then you become like a cult member or a, a, just a really mean person. Yeah. But the one thing that's the confusing part to me is the British guy. British guy knocks on the door and... John Malkovich rightfully says, don't let don't him in. Patty Cakes lets him in. <laughs> I was, I'm, I'm just a British man. I was here on a work trip and me and my, my co-workers all hid in this house. Crazy people came in. They forced us to, you know, look at the monster. I didn't. I ran away. Blah, blah, blah. And he's in the house for quite a while. Acting completely normal. Acting completely normal until he decides that now he's crazy. Yes. And he's going to fuck everyone over by opening up the windows. and. Or that was his people. plan all along. And somehow he's able to act normal for long enough. Who knows? Right. Was he lying or was he... Uh, crazy in disguise? If so, then you have real big problems <laughs> because you don't know who to trust. Yeah. And, and it's almost like everything... Which could be interesting if they flesh that out. If that was the only 
threat yeah. was that people become infected with this disease and then the, the, some people might be like spies or bad and then they just try and stab you. Yeah. But in, on top of that, we have monsters and we have, you kill yourself if you look at a monster. It's like everything in the kitchen sink being dumped in there, like right. threat-wise. And then any specific thing isn't very well explained. And that gets thematically confusing too, the whole, because they're going down the river and uh, it's kind of set up like one, she says to the two kids, one of you is going to have to look and navigate for me because the river gets rough up ahead. And I, I guess it's like, oh, she's probably going to make the kid that's not hers do it because it's not her kid. But then she says, no, neither of you are going to look. And so is the theme of the movie that we should just have blind faith? I don't know what the theme of this movie the, is supposed to be. The theme of the movie is she learns to open her eyes to motherhood. But if it was like she took off, she said, okay, you guys, I, we, I, someone has to look to navigate this. She was going to have one of the kids do it. Then she says, no, I'm going to take the responsibility. And then she takes her, her that, then you would have a point. That, uh, that would be the theme uh, of the movie. Uh, maybe, yeah. And she died <laughs> and the little kids made it to the compound. Yeah. She or she survived herself. for whatever reason. The, the thing didn't show up, but she learned to, to take responsibility for these children. That should be the moment that she opens her uh, eyes. Because yeah, yeah, that's the, the central conflict. The muddled, muddled, yes. muddled themes. But then the boat capsizes and they all float down the river anyway. So I'm like, those kids are dead. And if the theme was really strong, uh, it, it'd be easier to forgive some of the, the, the details, the literal kind of technical details of what's happening. Uh, again, like a quiet place. Like there's so many things you could pick apart in that, but the, the point of the movie is really strong. The theme of it yeah. is clear and, and well done. But this movie, it's like the, the narrative is messy the themes are messy. The mythology of the threat is messy. So it's like nothing gels. So why is this movie so popular? It's, it's one of two reasons. One, it's manufactured excitement or lies. Sure. Like, oh my gosh, Bird Box is the most popular thing in the world, everybody. There, there was a conspiracy theory that there were like bot Twitter accounts that were doing the hashtag uh, bird box challenge and that's what got it going. I don't know how you Russian can... bots? Russian bots. It's always those Russian bots. We're going to make Americans walk around with blindfolds on. <laughs> <laughs> or it's, it's like lowest common denominator entertainment, like a Transformers movie kind of where it's it's that version of horror where everyone goes, it's so spooky because Sandra Bullock can't see anything. Yeah, I think it's the blindfold hook, which yeah. is stupid. It's just sort of fascinating that such a mediocre thing is, is caught on the way it has. Yeah. Once it gets going, then you get so many dummies just following. Hey everyone, my mom's about to do the front thing. She's about to drive with her blindfold on. I'm freaking scared. So I'm gonna tell her when to stop or whatever. It's weird and scary happens with a lot of things. It's very easy to manipulate people. Yeah, and especially like, I mean, that's like fashion, you know, like everybody's doing this, everybody's wearing this. Yeah. People follow along and they, you know, they follow trends and- They don't even think about what got it started or why. Bird box challenge, let's put blindfolds on. Come on, kid! Oh! That's actually, it's kind of a really creepy example when you think about it. I can see like, like, like bird box challenge for mom, you know, trying to work her Facebook page with, <laughs> with a blindfold on, you know, but but not like like boiling a lobster, you know what I mean? Like, but the young people would do something dumb. Yeah, like go oh, hiking in the Grand Canyon, bird box style. <laughs> no, no, no. That's the the funny part is enough people have apparently gotten injured where Netflix felt the need to release a statement, said, "Hey, stop doing this." Your stupidity will be blamed on us. I wonder if they, uh, if you could figure out if Netflix did manufacture the Bird Box challenge, mm. and then if they did, then if they would be culpable or liable for a class action lawsuit, all because of the Bird Box movie. Mm -hmm. It's ironic, isn't it? Well, a class, a, a lawsuit. <laughs> for the most part, if something has a genuine word of mouth like swell. Yeah. It's probably pretty good. Um, but with this, it was odd. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I think I'm in the conspiracy camp. Okay. 
I mean, they are, Netflix is still somewhat selective. Did you hear about the Holmes and Watson movie? It got uh, such negative response and test screenings that the studio wanted to just sell it off to Netflix and dump it on Netflix. And Netflix was like, nope. And so they were like, I guess we got to release it in theaters. And then of course it comes out and it gets horrible reviews and it flops. Mm. So I think it's, even though this movie's mediocre, it still has, one, it has Sandra Bullock and everybody loves her. And then it has that hook, the blindfolds yeah. horror hook. The, uh, so it's like, even though the movie's pretty mediocre, it's got something we can sell. Cloverfield Paradox, terrible movie, but it's got the Cloverfield name. It's something we can sell. It's dad sci-fi. Yeah, there you go. This is mom horror and that's dad sci-fi. Mm -hmm. It was really good. <laughs> They were in space. <laughs> I sat in my big armchair with the coffee, and I smoked a cigar, and I ate potato chips. Then I fell asleep in the middle, but <laughs> woke up for the end. And time to take my diabetes medicine. There you go. Uh, it's like the Adam Sandler movies that they, they started pumping those out on Netflix, where it's like they're not good, but they have an audience, yeah, and there's that, yeah. that hook. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, Holmes and Watson, they probably looked at that and said, this, we got nothing. It's easier to, to walk out, so to speak, of a Netflix movie than yeah. it is when you go to an actual theater, pay money, sit down. That, that's why I say if this movie had come out in theaters, it probably would have flopped, or at least not done very well. Uh-huh, right. Yeah, 45 million no, people. No one might. wants to, to leave their house in the middle of winter to go see Bird Box. Mm -hmm. And nobody wants to, I mean, I, if I were Netflix, I would have bought Holmes and Watson. Who wants to go to the theater to watch that? That's and, true. You know, so, oh yeah, comedy, Will Ferrell, I'll ah, click. Probably got, would have gotten 50 million clicks. <laughs> they would have watched a minute and shut it off. Yeah. But then you could claim that it's the most successful Netflix movie ever. Yeah. And then everyone would be doing the Holmes and Watson challenge, which is to eat a Tide Pod. <laughs> or just, just get really, really, really old and unfunny like Will Ferrell. <laughs> I'm trying to age myself faster. I'm lying in the sun. I'm, <laughs> I'm drinking booze. And I'm not making jokes. I'm just yelling non sequiturs. Man, it's me, Will Ferrell! <laughs> so, Jay, even though it's free, and you don't, if, if you have a Netflix subscription, and- I said that in a video once, where I was like, it's free because it's on Netflix. And there were people in the comments that were like, it's not free because you pay for Netflix. It's like, you know what the fuck I mean. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. That's some genuine anger there. <laughs> you know what I mean, you assholes. People love to, to, to type up the gotcha comments. Uh, but no, I would uh, recommend it. There's some decent movies. Uh, Apostle is on Netflix right now. It's a Gareth Evans movie with uh, Dan Stevens. Sort of a period piece cult movie. It's really, really good. I recommend that as far as Netflix movies go. I don't know. I, I would say like if you're curious to see what, what all the... The buzz is about, you know, you can watch it. Oh God, I think I killed 16 people, but I made it to the grocery store and back. Mr. Plinkett, I'm really surprised you would take part in some stupid trend like the bird box challenge. Bird box challenge? <laughs>